Hello and welcome to another Wargame Red Dragon video with me, Bubblebox, and today we are continuing in the Bubble and Silver and Vulcan Do Decks series. Yes, we are joined again by Vulcan from Vulcan HD Gaming. Please do check his description, his link even, in the description below. And today we've got something a little bit different because we're moving on after doing all the inverted commas normal decks and we're moving on to the more specialised decks. And today we're going to be having a look at the Russian armored deck hi guys hello hello so, so let's kick off with the logistics then all right so to begin with um in the logistics i have the bmp 1k uh this is my staple command unit i don't have two commands on this deck mainly because i feel it's unnecessary with armored because you have so much forward presence on the map that you don't necessarily lose uh, CVs that often. So, yeah, I only picked one command unit in this one and I chose the BMP-1K, although I was tempted to take like the T-72K1 just to get a bit more armor, but that was just uh, the decision I made at the time because the BMP-1K is amphibious and it's just easier to get around. Um, then I have a FOB, of course. I have the MI-6 supply helicopter, I think basically because it's the only supply helicopter you can get. And it also does give you a lot of supply. It's useful to have on the field. And then to supply uh, on the, the ground, we have Ural 4320s. So those are the most expensive Ural and most expensive ground supply vehicle. But the supply of 1,100 1, litres is worth having. So that's what I chose. Yep, cool. And what about you, Silver? I also got the MI6 and the Ural. I always like having these uh, high supply helicopters, using them as mini fobs to resupply the Ural backwards and forwards. Uh, in this case, the Ural needs to be fast to be able to keep up with the, the moving armor division. Uh, I also have a fob uh, because it's me, it's standard. And as for commands, I actually did get two different command vehicles. I first did get the T72 K1. Uh, because I thought this was an armored deck, I might as well put a tank CV in here. And uh, for my other, I actually got the T-80UK as my second command vehicle. And the reason why I have two different tanks is that I'm imagining sort of uh, charging forward. And then as I go through, I just sort of drop off a tank or two uh, uh, CV into like tree lines of capturing sectors as I go along. And the fact that they're armored, they can also... Uh, I'm kind of weird. I actually use my tank CVs as frontline units. To, if, if the situation allows, I like to move them forward out of the trees or at the end of the tree line so that they can fire a few shots before retreating back in. So, I don't know. It's, it's really to whatever people want. Yeah, I'm not sure about your logic there. I guess you could have just bought in the T-80 UKs and then bought a cheap command to replace them behind, but... Yeah, okay. Well, I've got the BM, BMP-1K, just exactly the same as Vulcan, and that's my only command unit in this deck. MI6s, and I haven't gone for the Urals. I've gone for the MTP-LBs. You know I always go for these because they're amphibious, although they do hold a lot less supply, of course, than the Ural. And I have no FOB. Now, the reason I have no FOB is because I know that we're going to be doing... Um, three different decks in the games we play, one armoured and one supply, one supply deck um, and one airborne deck. So I'm assuming the one with the supply deck is going to be producing a lot of the supply for us. So I haven't even bothered to put a fob in. Call so me selfish. <laughs> yeah, basically you're trying to be the, the thief of uh, us three. Yeah. yeah. I think that's far enough. So let's move on to the infantry. All right. Uh, for infantry, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, choice. I just got infantry basically to uh, sort of throw at a village to see what's in there and then have the tanks to sort of pepper the village until it's clear or bypass the village with the tanks entirely. Uh, so I got the Motostroki and uh, the MTLBV 5 uh, point trucks of death. But then uh, got some Motostroki 90s because they have... Uh, a little better uh, RPG in a BMP-3. These are more just sort of uh, help take on heavy armor if it, if they're the battle close to the village and there's a lot of micro going along. And then, of course, I got some uh, Iglas uh, as well. I got the cheaper ones rather than the more expensive ones so I can bring more of them in. 
Uh, and so, uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. That, that's it. Okay, not sure about those you, choices, you, but you what got about the you, Vulcan? Igla. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Because the yeah, ten point one. No, the fifteen point. Oh, sorry, the Igla. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, right. Not the okay. It, it's yeah. fine. It, I mean, yeah, it's it's got four HP power instead of five, but I can bring nine of them in instead of uh, seven with the Igla N, and there's not really much much difference apart from the HE power. So I thought that was uh, decent enough. At least it keeps the helicopters away from villages. Okay, I'll have something to say about that at the end. What about you, Volker? Um So I've got three cards of Motostroke, one Motostroke 90. Uh, one card of Motostroke is in the empty LBVs, just because you get a lot of them, and they're good for just spamming towns, like Silver said. I've got a set of normal Motostrokes in the BMP2 OBRs. Um, I, I just like the BMP2s. I think they're really effective ground support units. Uh, they have a very powerful Conquers M HGM on them with 50% accuracy and 23 AP power. And the auto cannon is also very good. They are well armored as well. So, yeah, a nice support unit for pushing those towns. Um, and also the HGM can be used to counter tanks, although that's not a big deal in this deck because you are going to have lots of tanks of your own. But I do have the most Motostroke 90s as well in the BMP3 just because the BMP3 is such a good support vehicle again. Um, it does have like a separate cannon for the uh, anti-infantry aspect which has the 3 HE power and then it has like a really strong uh, auto cannon as well. Although that auto cannon does run out of ammunition very very quickly which is kind of annoying. But yeah, still a very very good unit. And the uh, BMP3 is also amphibious alongside the BMP2, so that sort of makes uh, both of those cards very versatile. One thing to note about the BMP3 is that that main gun it actually has longer range than most tanks at 2,450 mm -hmm. meters. Yeah, but it's yeah. only against infantry. Yeah. Um, then I have a card of PTUR Conquers M's. And this is just because the Conquest M is probably the most effective HGM in the game, and therefore I took some with the 50% accuracy and 23 H HE power, or AP power, sorry. Um, you can put them in edge of towns and they will pick off units in, with side shots in pretty much one hit, so definitely worth having in my opinion. And then I have a card to finish off of the Igla ends with the 5 HE power. I do think the 5 HE power does make a huge difference. So, yeah, that's my five cards. Okay, okay, cool. Now, I've only actually got three cards of infantry in this deck. And I, I agree with what you say about the BMP3. It's got a great long-range ATGM unit, and the gun's not too bad either, especially for only 35 points. And also the BMPs with some of their nice ATGMs as well. But I've tended to go for really cheap vehicles the main reason being that i'm going to be relying on my tanks to kill other tanks and i'm assuming that's i, th I think that's what the armored deck really is for rather than sort of using atgms and stuff like that but i have gone for the three motor strelkies exactly the same as vulcan except mine are all basic motor strelki again not really gone for the high ap power apart from on my tank divisions my first my, my, two of my motor strokers are in the cheap very cheap mtl bv just for spamming putting into towns and taking on other infantry and one set i've got in the bmp uh 1d because it's got a little auto uh, uh grenade launcher that can be used against infantry in the towns that they're attacking as well mm. and that's that's my three cards yeah of really like the bmp 1d yeah i didn't go for any atgms normally i do but again, I'm going to be relying heavily on my tanks to kill AP, uh, armored vehicles and other tanks. Okay. So let's move on to the support. Okay. Um, so for me, to start off with, I have the Book M1. Um, mm -hmm. Easily the best radar AA you can get. It has 4,550 meter range versus airplanes, uh, 9 HE power, and yeah, just really good all-round radar AA unit. Uh, then I have two cards of MTLB Strela 10 Ms. Uh, these are just great for like supporting tank pushes. Uh, they have 5 HE power on their uh, infrared missiles and then they have 50% uh, accuracy and 50% stabilizer so they're basically just as accurate uh, on the move as they are stationary which again um, makes them good at supporting tank pushes. 
Uh, then I have a 2K22 Tunguska M. Uh, this is just a really, really good um, anti-air unit. has its uh, infrared missiles, which can fire at 3,325 meter range against helicopters. 65% accuracy, and you know, you can turn off the cannon in order to make it untargetable by seed, so that's always useful. And then if you want to uh, turn the cannon back on, that is also very, very powerful and very, very accurate. So a nice unit there. And to finish yep. off, I've got a set of Nona's with the 5 HE power mortar ability, which I just think are great for stunning enemy targets uh, when you're assaulting with tanks. So yeah, that's my choices. Yeah, cool. Nice. Silver. Um, I uh, basically just focus entirely on AA because the biggest bane of tanks happen to be helicopters and aircraft so I just wanted to make sure I could shoot all of those pesky aircraft down uh, I got the Buck M1s like Vulcan I got two cards of the Tunguska M uh, because uh, eight of these things are really scary to deal with if you're fighting against them uh, and finally I also got the Strela 10Ms as well and I just want to say it keeps a bit overpowered that uh, the Soviet armored can bring in stabilizer AA, whereas if you make a US armored, you can't. You can't even bring in the Aven Avengers in to go with it, so I just think it's a little bit unfair, but uh, there you go. You just keep your armored division moving, and your AA still moves with it on the move. Yep, cool. Well, I've got uh, all my five slots filled. I've gone for the Nona's, exactly the same as uh, Vulcan, I really like them as well, but that is my only artillery. Again, I'm going to be um, expecting some support from the person with the support deck. They're going to have a lot to live up to, obviously, and with me, with me playing an armoured deck. Uh, but I've got a lot of AA. I've got two sets of the um, high-range Tunguskas, the 100-point Tunguskas, two sets of them. So I've got eight of those. And I've gone for, rather than going for the uh, Buck, I've gone for the Tours. Um, because the tours have got long range against helicopters and aircraft, and that's why I really like these things, even though you have to keep switching their uh, radar on and off all the time. And that that's it for my, for my AA and my artillery. Cool. Tanks. Now, the big one. Let's head off. Who's first with the tanks, then? Uh, probably me. Go. All right. Well... For the, the first thing I decided to do was grab the two most expensive tanks that the Soviets have, so the T-72BU and the T-80UM, both of which are very, very good, expensive uh, tanks. So, okay. So those were automatically my first two cards. Then the other tanks I had to actually go around, swap out a few. It took a little while to figure out all I wanted, but I finally decided in the end. Uh, the next tank that I got, which is basically my uh, medium heavy tank, is the T-72B OBR 1987. And I got this because it was just sort of a, a good balance between what I was looking for, uh, armor protection and uh, firepower, compared to other tanks I was looking at. This is just seemed to have the biggest balance of all of them for the price I was looking at, so that's why I chose it. The next for my medium tank is the T-72B. I love these things. Uh, almost all of my Soviet decks will have it. Uh, they're just very good for their price. A very good ATGM missile, very good gun, and uh, pretty decent armor protection. So I got two stacks of these at Elite, uh, making them you know, as best as they possibly could. And then for my uh, medium, a lowish, a cheapish tank, I actually got the plain old T-80. And when I was doing this, I was trying to decide between the T-80 and the T-62 MP-1, and uh, I eventually noticed that even though the T-62 MP-1 has the ATGM, its main gun is so poor, it's basically, if you're bringing that in, it's, in, it's basically an armored ATGM uh, tank and not as good. So I got the T-80 because it was more just sort of an assault tank. You just roll it across... Uh, Good range, decent protection, and uh, uh, excellent fire rate at a rate of nine rounds per minute. So I got two stacks of those. Uh, for a slightly cheaper, uh, kind of like support tank, I got the T62M1, which was uh, 15 points cheaper. Those are just going to stay in the forest as my tanks advance and help 
sort of do a little bit more pot shots uh, at anything that shoots back. And then finally I got the, for my cheap tanks, the regular T-62s, these are just going to roll across, uh, shoot what they can, and just have, draw enemy fire while the rest of the tanks uh, try to take it out. So, now they're all mm. my tanks. Yeah, I, I have some big disagreements <laughs> with those choices. Well, the T sixty two is not one because yeah. it because it as a spam tank because it hasn't got a machine gun. Well, okay. That's my first well, the, thing. Yeah, go. The go. thing is, right? I've got the first two same tanks, T seventy two BU and T eighty UM. They are like staple tanks for this deck. Um, the T I've followed up with the T eighty U, um, just as expensive, really, just a bit cheaper, but still a very like fearsome tank to go up against. Still has twenty front armor, so yeah, just a really really good tank. Uh, to have on the deck as well. Now, you, Silver, you chose the T-72B OBR, right? Mm, yeah. I chose the T-64BV, because for five points more, you get 5% extra accuracy, 5% extra stabilizer, two extra AP power on the main gun, and you also get 5% extra accuracy on the HGM and a 45% stabilizer on the HGM. Yeah, I actually did look at that and had that for a while, but uh, then I noticed that the T-70B has slightly better uh, protection, uh, and it was faster, and uh, that's, I just, it was basically a coin toss, and the coin kind of landed up on the T-72B, so the T-64BV is still very good. I just think the T-64BV is so much more, like, value for money. Like, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, the other decision that you made was to do with the T... T-80. What? No, not, I wasn't, no, not the T-80. Oh, what oh, was your other uh, T-72B. We've done that one. Um, no, T-72B was absolutely fine. I think that's a really, really good tank. But I've got the T-64B uh, after that. Then I've got the T62 MV1, and the reason I actually took these, because although you say they're like a glorified armoured uh, HGM carrier, if you're bringing them in at Elite, they basically never miss, so that's worth having. Um, then, uh, going cheaper than that, I've actually got some T72As, and these are way better than the equivalent that you took, I think it was the T62 M1. Yeah, I got the T sixty two M one because it had longer range. Yeah, fair enough. But if you're using the T sixty two M one as like a supporting tank because you already have multiple tanks with the longest range, then why mm. not have a gun which is way way better with more HE power and also your tank's got way more armor. Hmm. I'll have to think about that during this. Um. Then finally, <laughs> you guys are going to start the mama I jokes in a minute. Have um, the BMP 685s. These things are just amazing, and they completely outweigh the reason why you would have T 55As or T 62s, because the BMP 685 has a 55% accurate gun with, you know, like way more accuracy. Um, you got way more rate of fire, what, like a better stabilizer. These things can fire on the move, and they're just I incredible for like killing infantry because of their rate of fire, and just in general being a decent cheap support unit for like infantry APCs like the BMP2 and the BMP3s. I just think they're really really good for that role, and mm -hmm. of course they're elite, so they're even better. As, yeah, yeah. The, the, the lack of armor just is what detracted a little bit. But yeah, I see your point. Mm. Okay, cool. Is that it? Well, yeah, just, we like just the we final like, point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when it comes to tanks in this game, I think accuracy is probably the most important stat. And also rate of fire. Um, accuracy is incredibly important, mainly due to the fact that in tank-on-tank -tank engagements, um, stabilization malfunctions, weapon resets, stuff like that, like critical hits, always occur well pretty much from like a first shot and when you're having like tank on tank battles whoever basically hits first will win the tank engagement m more or less um so what you often see is when like a tank like a big tanks like t72bu comes up against like an m1a2 abrams whoever hits first the person who gets hit will normally retreat 
because there is no point continuing that engagement because the person who hit the other person will cause their tank to be panicked or like worried or whatever which will reduce the effectiveness whilst the other tank continues with its high rate of fire and high accuracy and doesn't take any penalty whatsoever so that's just really worth noting i think yeah yeah good point good point yeah about the first hit policy absolutely is that it for your tanks yeah that's all cool well i i'm dread going dreading going through mine now right okay let's have a look uh well i have not this is the first thing I have not got the T-80UM, nor have I got the T-72BU, so I haven't got the really big tanks. What I have got is two sets of T-80Us, both at Elite. So I've got two sets of them, it's got four of those. And then, something you two haven't, I, neither of you two have gone, so I don't know what you think about this. I've gone for, again, these are all Elite, unless I say they're not, the T-80As, mainly because of their really long-range ATGMs which again, they can shoot out of range of the most NATO tanks. And as you say, if they get the first hit and then roll in and use their main gun, maybe. Then I've gone for two sets of T-80BVs. So I've got four of those again. So I'm all T-80s so far. And then I've gone for the T-72 MV1s, um, everything at Elite. And then I've just swapped out a set of T-55As for the BMP 60, whatever it is, because now that you said that Vulcan, because I forgot all about them. And I remember you mentioning them in another deck before that we did as well. And then I've got two sets of spam tanks. I've got a set of T-72s for spamming and a T set of T-55As for spamming. Both of them got machine guns and stabilizers. And that's my tanks. Okay. I, I, I think you're seriously missing out, not taking the big heavies. I like, I like yeah. the T-80 series though. So most of those tanks are like okay obviously yeah. uh, like there are some improvements i think that the t-ata is one of those those tanks that could fit in like i have like a gap where it goes from 130 points to 95 points and like the t-ata would fit in there but yeah um yeah otherwise other than that i just think you're missing out heavily with those big tanks especially yeah, if they're maybe. both prototype and you know having a russian armored deck is pretty much the only reason you would have them um mm -hmm. Like normally, I think the availability for them is only one each. Um, yeah, that's one one reason I didn't kind of get. So them you can because... get two each mm. in this deck. Oh, can you? Because it's oh, Russian okay. armored. Okay. Yes, of course. Yeah. Well, I'll stick with what I've got. I've gone for my. I've gone for a bit of a T eighty theme on my armored deck, so I'll stick with it for these games and see what happens. See how <laughs> they perform. Fair enough. Right. Let's move on after that tank battle to the reconnaissance tab. Okay. Um, <laughs> so after all that, um, I've got the uh, PT-85, um, just a very good uh, recon vehicle, it has 12 rate of fire, it's just an amazing little recon vehicle this. I don't necessarily like having recon with armaments, but when you're going to uh, be using this with your uh, pushes, in my opinion, I think that's what it's used for. Um, having that high rate of fire can can really take out infantry very very quickly when you're like supporting your infantry um, and supporting your tanks as well um yeah. it is quite vulnerable because it has low armor but generally you know this thing's just competent for 40 points um then i have the mi2 again 40 points for a recon helicopter with very good recon worth having it only has four strength but at the end of the day they're so cheap that it doesn't necessarily matter if it gets shot down um, and they provide you with the airborne recon, so again, worth having. Cool. Um, then I have a unit of uh, Razvedka in MI-24Ds at Hardened. What? So Ooh. this is kind of a small thing. Um, I have the Razvedkas because I need recon infantry, basically. But the reason I took the MI-24Ds is because I didn't have, I don't actually have much, like many helicopters at all. So the MI-24D is a really, really good uh, helicopter. And if you can get it for 55 points, then, you know, in my opinion, it's worth having. So that's why I took that unit. The problem is, is that I found anything, any MI-24D that comes in not at elite, is hard pressed to kill anything with those flights and missiles. Yeah, oh. I, I just needed some helicopters, so that's how I got them. All right. And then uh, finally, I've got the BRM-1K, exceptional recon. <laughs> yeah. Um, just 
definitely worth having because it's exceptional recon basically and it's only 50 points i think okay. it's also worth noting that such a vehicle has medium stealth instead of most vehicles that have four stealth really cool yeah mm -hmm. the brm 1k has medium stealth so does the yeah, so does the pt85 <laughs> oh okay i'm shut up that's <laughs> <laughs> okay right it's your turn anyway what have you got well, I, I, also, I got the BRM-1K, the PT-85, and the MI-2, like Vulcan. Uh, I didn't get any infantry recon. Uh, I kind of dislike five-man uh, uh, recon squads because uh, they're kind of easy to uh, die, I guess, was what I'm, the word I'm looking for. But, uh, yeah. but uh, they, they do have their purpose for spotting stuff out. But I decided yeah. to just those, those three things that I said. Okay, I've got similar. Again, there's not a lot of choice, to be honest, in the recon tab for the Russian armoured deck. I have not gone for the BRM-1K. I've got the MI-2. Again, uh, you don't have to babysit it too much because it does only cost 40 points, and you can put it on the flanks as well to check for any flanking attacks. I've got the uh, PT-85. I was going to get the cheaper one, but then I saw that the uh, more expensive one at 40 points was, as you say, slightly better fire rate. So I've got to spend the extra five points now to get the uh, slightly better yeah. PT-85. The gun is just so much better. Yeah. And then I've got the set of Rads Vedskas, or how you pronounce that. Again, I did want want a set of uh, recon infantry, but I've just bought mine in, in Urals. I haven't bought them in anything too special or too expensive. I figured I'd be spending enough on my tanks, so I didn't want to be spending a lot of points on other things if I can help it. And that's my recon. All right. Cool. So, vehicles. <laughs> on oh, I, I've got, there's, there's some nice vehicles. What have you got? Yeah, I've got... First, I started off with the TO-62, uh, basically because it has, first off, the main gun, but also because it has napalm. And considering how we're in tanks, uh, napalm's only really stun uh, tanks. They don't really do... I, I found a whole lot of damage, not like napalm does to infantry so spray napalm everywhere to uh catch out any infantry or block any like atgm i thought would be pretty useful um, yeah. and then next off uh to help counter infantry even more i got bmpts uh because well they're infantry killers in every sense of the word yeah yeah why wouldn't you have those yeah okay and and that's it is it no, I still have more infantry killers, like the SU-122-54, with its 5 HE power for 15 points. Okay. Uh. Um, and even further, <laughs> even further, um, for even more support, uh, fire support, I have the uh, two, two S-15 Norovs, uh, with their 12 rate of fire and 50% accuracy, uh, to help uh, fire support as my tanks advance across open field. And finally, for a little more AA, I got Afghanskis. Blimey. Wow. Yeah, I'm investing a lot you vehicles. You spent, <laughs> like, three points on... Afghanskis, yeah. Yeah. Well, not, not, I would say you spent three points on those flipping Norov things, or whatever they're called. Yeah. I wouldn't have got, I wouldn't have got those for three for a cost of three, to be honest. I okay. I just think that, okay. a lot of mediocre units for well, a lot of activation way. points. We'll put it this way, I was trying to figure out where to spend the rest of my points and vehicles it just ended up being. Mm, okay. okay. Have you filled all your one slots in your tanks and everything else? Yes. Your inf yeah. Right. Okay. Well, no, my infantry, yeah. my infantry only have three cards. I didn't yeah, fill out okay. my infantry. Okay. What about you, Vulcan? Um, I've got the BMPTs. Again, just great infantry killers. The frag grenade launcher. you got the uh, HE uh, gun and the uh, auto cannon just absolutely rips them to shreds and has high front armor to take any missile hits. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, that's uh, worth having. And then I have a card of Afghanskis because I don't have any uh, sort of, uh, what's it called, uh, like AAA. Um, I don't have any AAA um, anti-air, so I think Tunguskas. the Afghanskis are worth having. Well, I've only yeah. got one unit of Tunguskas, and I don't really right. like... A, use the main gun on them very often because it's always turned right. off against seed so these things are just worth having in my opinion they shred infantry like so easily um yeah i like the uh, i like the fact you got the su-122s i think they're actually uh sort of overlooked quite a lot but i'm not necessarily so sure about the nor of pick because we've got so many tanks but yeah um that's, i've only got a couple of cards 
I've only got a couple of cards, just the PMPTs and the Afghan skis. Okay, well, after moaning at uh, Vulcan, I have actually got four cards filled up. Not the not the three cost one though, not the three cost. And the last one was kind of just because I didn't know what to spend the rest of my points on. But I have got the BMPTs. Who wouldn't? Why wouldn't you have the BMPTs in this deck? Got to have them. And the Afghan skiers for pretty much the same reason. A little bit of extra anti-air, good against infantry as well. Will help my uh, hopefully will help my motor stroke a little bit if needed. I've gone for the TO62 napalm tanks as well. It's an armored deck. It's got tanks, so I thought I'd better take this thing also to supplement my force. And then. Yeah, this is this is terrible unit. I've got <laughs> I don't even say it. I've got the ASU 85M 10 points. It only costs 10 points, guys, so uh go easy on it and I've got a load of them if I want to spam. I am that. not going to go easy on it because for five points more you could have the SU. Yeah. <laughs> I've got it now. I'll probably not even bring it out to be honest. So. <laughs> yeah. You, um, That's, just the you point can switch. Before, you can switch. Just the point before yeah. we move on. I think it's worth like um, going over the point that Silver made again with the TO62, um, the napalm capabilities of that thing, like those tanks are kind of overlooked again. Um, most people like assume like uh, the TO62 is like for the you know, anti-infantry, which it is like in terms of like you can sit one at an edge of a town and spray loads of napalm into the town. But yeah. the, the other uses for it are that it can literally create massive smoke screens. Like, because yeah. napalm acts as smoke in most cases, and yeah. you can form huge smoke screens, and that can be incredibly important in tank engagements. Um, especially if you're being flanked by HGMs, for example, you may be out of range with the napalm to kill the HGM, but you can still napalm in that direction and block the line of fire. So, yeah, definitely worth uh, mentioning. Yeah, yeah top, top tip. Thanks very much. Yeah, brilliant. Let's move on to the helis then. All right. Okay. Um, is it me or you? Uh, <laughs> I can't remember. I, I, I think it's you, Vulcan. Because okay. I Vulcan. <laughs> right. Okay. So I've only got a couple of cards anyway. I've got the Mi Twenty Four VP, um, just the best HGM on a helicopter you can get on this deck. So that's why I got it. Fifty-five percent accurate, twenty-two AP power Cocon missile. Um, nothing to shy away from. And then I've got a card of MI4As, um, <laughs> Bubbles, lovely MI4s, yeah. I got those too, and, I, and the reason why I got those two is why I didn't get the MI24D, because between the MI24VP and the MI4AV, I thought that was enough uh, attack helicopters for this armored deck to not have to bring it in with infantry that weren't elite. Fair enough. So, so all you've got is the... MI-24 VPs and the MI-4As, just one card. Right. Or I got the 4 AVs because they have more rockets and they have ATGM missiles for the same uh, points. Okay, well I've got the MI-24 VP. I, th I would assume you would definitely get this. Yeah, um, we, we, because, we did. Yeah, I mean, because this is just a brilliant chopper. And I've got two stacks of them, both at, what's the upper one? Is it a hardened? Yeah. Both at hardened. So I've got six hardened of these. So these are just not going to miss for me, hopefully. Really nice choppers. I've only got one card, but they are hardened. Yeah. I got so one card, on. but as trained. Yeah, that's all I've got, just those two. I haven't gone for the little choppers this time. So, moving on to the last tab, the aircraft. Silver, you're off first this time. Well, I decided that with aircraft, I wanted to be able to just shoot down all planes because that's the final sort of uh, uh, noose in the coffin for armored decks is aircraft uh, after helicopters. So I got two cards of uh, SU-27PUs, the best of the best that the Soviets have in terms of air superiority. And then follow up there uh, is the SU-27S. Uh, due to Even though the Vimpel missiles are semi-active, they have the longest air-to-air uh, uh, -air, uh, missiles in range in the game at 7,700 meters. So that gives me a little more air superiority. And finally, the MiG-29M, which I really, really like due to the fact it has its uh, Vimpel missile to shoot at long range. Supplement that, it's also a cluster bomber, so if there's any really heavy tanks that are giving me trouble doing my push, I could always try dropping a cluster bomb to the, dislodge them. So those are my aircraft. Okay, excellent. Okay. Um, I have the IL-102s. I think this is the best bomber you can get on the this deck. The other choice is the SU-24M. 
um, which has obviously more UCM but less armor. Like the, the IL-102 is is pretty hard to kill um, with its two front armor and two rear armor. Um, so it's going to take a couple missiles at least to shoot it down. Um, the 500 kilogram bombs, you have 14 of them, so this thing just absolutely annihilates anything it lands on top of. So that's uh, always a plus. I think the IO-102 was actually an experimental aircraft that never went into full production. I'm not sure, but I thought I read that somewhere. But just, just yeah. interesting right. trivia for the day. Um, but yeah... Um, I just really like that bomber. I, th I think it's uh, you know decent enough, and if you make sure that um, all of the ground um, AA is destroyed, then you know you can have a pretty fun time with this thing. Yeah, and it's uh, often compared to the B five. This has, a, I think, kind of a wider area of effect, yeah. whereas the B B five is more of a kaboom sort of thing in one massive area. Indeed. But um, you can decimate towns, infantry in towns, with this thing. Yeah, it it's just goes like really, full carpet really bombing. <laughs> so, yeah. Really good. Um, then I've got a card of uh, MiG 27Ks. These are like the ultimate beast, uh, like just sniping tanks. So again, this is my sort of equivalent of um, Silver's MiG 29Ms. I've got the MiG 27Ks, which are a bit more like you know point and click, and you yeah. blow up a tank. Um, never really let me down. Okay. Um, oh. Then I've got a card of the SU-27S's. Uh, you get two on one card, so yep. worth having. Um, instead of the uh, SU-27PU, obviously you've got two cards of those because you can in this deck. But um, yeah, I just didn't want to pay as much, and you get basically just as an effective anti-air unit. So that was my got, choice. Yep, but I got all. I got all of them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then. Finally, I have the MiG-25 BM for Seed, um, just so that my MiG-27K and the IL-102 can have a good time occasionally. Okay, cool. I've got two MiG uh, SU-27PUs, same as uh, Silver Raptor, but I've also got the Interceptor, the MiG-31 as well. I know it's not that accurate, but um, if you're careful with it, this thing's just never, ever going to get shot down because it comes in from so far back with a massive range of 11,900. Just he actually does let it down a little bit, but it's got six missiles and they're all fire and forget. So it's um, the uh, MiG-31 M, not the MiG-31 the, the M, yeah, the M, the one with that. I mean, I don't, I don't see the point of getting the one with the little gun. No, the little gun you never, never use it. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and not no only point. that, those, those missiles are also semi-active, so you, it's basically getting closer to its target all the time. Yeah, yeah. I've also gone for the MiG 29M. I did have some more air superiority, but I've just swapped them out now that I saw that it is a cluster bomber and it's got long range Vimpel, Vimpel missiles as well. So I've just swapped that out. And I've got the IL 102 bomber as well. And that's my aircraft in my Russian armored deck. So that's about it, guys. Any final words before we go for our favorite unit? Really, mm -hmm. I nope. think I mentioned most of the stuff when we're actually going over the armor. But yeah. Okay. Well, shall I go first? Because I think I'm going to pick one that you guys are not going to pick. Go for it. And mm. it's the old favorite. Yeah, it's the old favorite, isn't it? It's the uh, T80U. That's going to be debatable with some bigger tanks out there for not a lot more points. But I'm still going to stick with my favorite, the T80U, for my favorite tank in this deck. Uh, let's make a note. Are we are we stuck to just the tank roll, or can we choose anything? To, you you can choose anything, but yeah, I guess we should really deck. choose a tank. Yeah, we should probably just choose a tank. Vulcan, you have. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, no clue really. I don't know. Let's see. Um, what about the T sixty two MV one? Dare I say? <laughs> no. You uh, go I, first, I think, then Silver. No, yeah, okay. go on. I think I'm going to go with the BMP-685. I think this thing is like one of those sneaky tanks that always does a lot more damage <laughs> than it's given credit for. Yeah. And I, I, think, like... I, and I think I'm going to end up using these quite a lot. So that's going to be my favorite unit for this deck. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I've just yeah. realized it's amphibious as well. Yeah, you've convinced me, Vulcan. I'm actually going to swap out my regular T-62s for the BMP, and I realized... Because the, 
the tank that I've chosen have a lot of uh, high front armor, and the big problem with the BMP is it doesn't. So if I keep these behind most of my other tanks, they should pretty much survive and cause extra damage. And they're not going to be sitting armor. behind because they have a shorter range, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm still going to pick them because they, their rate of fire is still pretty good and accuracy. Now, for okay. my favorite, my favorite tank, it's just going to be the T-72B because these things are very, very good value for money. I've always been happy to bring these in to fight on my front line, so I'll stick with the, the ones I've been play using all these months with. Okay. Right. Thanks very much then, guys. Um, hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.